as a continuance of our uh, pharmacology lectures today we will discuss about uh, antibiotics especially the antibacterial antibiotics and more specifically about the cell wall synthesis inhibitors our first uh, video lecture is about their classification and mechanism of action and subsequent lectures in subsequent lecture we will discuss their uses side effects and about their pharmacokinetics so what are antibiotics any drug which is obtained from living organisms and is used against living organisms either to kill them or to stop their growth static or cal antibiotics so antibiotics are of two types bacterial statics these are those antibiotics that inhibit or stop the growth of a bacteria or they need immune system to eradicate bacteria from our body they are called bacteriostatic antibiotics and second type is a bactericidal or bactericidal antibiotics these are those antibiotics which kill bacteria and eradicate it from our body 
they don't need immune system so they work also an immunocompromised patients but the bactericidal bacteriostatic drug they only work uh, when our immune system is active or when our immune system has the capability to eradicate the bacteria from our body it means that they are not effective in the immunocompromise or those patient which have poor immune systems now let us come toward the cell wall one of the most widely most commonly used antibiotic uh, uh, class is a cell wall synthesis inhibitors what does this mean this means that these are those antibiotics uh, which uh, inhibit uh, the bacterial cell wall synthesis inhibit the bacterial cell wall synthesis they are also called cell wall active agents they include cyclosporin bacitracin vancomycin and beta lactams antibiotics later on we will see that how when they inhibit the bacterial cell wall synthesis how they become able to kill the bacteria what are their effects on the bacteria but let us now first discuss them in a little detail what are beta lactam beta lactam include penicillins most widely used antibiotics cephalosporin also the most widely used most safe antibiotics carbapenems and estreo nem they are the most widely used penicillin cephalosporin they are well known to all of us uh, carbapenem include meropenem amipenem we will discuss later on these in detail amipenem and doripenem what are the estreo names estreo name include manobactin these are the newer classes of uh, antibiotics they are reserved for the highly resistant strains now these are the four classes of uh, bacterial cell wall synthesis inhibitor antibiotics 
before we really start the bacterial cell wall uh, synthesis inhibitor topic uh, let's, uh, let us first know that uh, what is the composition of uh, bacterial cell wall synthesis how it is uh, normally synthesized and why it is needed for the bacterial survival let us consider uh, based, uh, based on cell wall bacteria are of three types gram positive bacteria gram negative bacteria and uh, those which are having a uh, certain special structures we will not discuss them in detail let us first discuss the let us uh, take example of a uh, gram positive bacteria let us consider this is a pseudo monas bacteria gram positive and let us consider this is e coli this is a gram negative bacteria now what is the difference between their cell wall which makes some bacteria susceptible to these cell wall synthesis inhibitor and make some bacteria resistant to the action of these cell wall synthesis inhibitor main difference this is a bacterial cell membrane which I have drawn here huh? lipid by layer uh, now this is a lipid by layer of a phospholipids bacterial cell membrane this is the bacterial cell membrane the main difference is in their cell wall in case of a gram positive bacteria the cell wall is thick while in case of gram, gram negative bacteria the cell wall is thin but what is the main difference which makes gram positive bacteria susceptible and gram negative bacteria resistant now we will see here these are the sugar backbone which make the bacterial cell wall, cell wall they are attached to each other in layer by means of a this peptide bonds these peptide bonds they are responsible for the integrity of the bacterial cell wall in case of uh, gram negative bacteria here are also sugar backbones which are attached with either with each other huh, in layers huh, by means of these peptide linkages in case of a gram positive bacteria the bacterial cell wall is about 60 to 80 layers these layers are about 60 to 80 layers while in case of gram negative bacteria a bacterial cell wall is about 20 layers la thick but but these uh, gram negative bacteria they have another additional lipid uh, layer which make them different from these gram positive bacteria and make them resistant to the action of uh, cell wall senses inhibitors although this lipid bilayer 
in this lipid bilayer these gram negative bacteria have certain channels for transport of uh, substances uh, these channels are called porine channels this channel uh, vary among different uh, species of uh, gram negative bacteria and also the opening of these channels is a uh, different uh, among different uh, species of gram negative bacteria uh, which make that some gram negative bacteria are susceptible to the action of these cell wall sense inhibitor and some bacteria are uh, resistant to the action of these bacterial cell wall sense inhibitor now why is this cell wall so important this cell wall is important because if uh, our drug for example this is the basic structure of a uh, penicillin a beta lactam ring is r side chain if uh, it has to act upon these bacteria it has to cross this bacterial this bacterial cell wall because the penicillin binding protein which are responsible for bacterial cell wall synthesis they are located on the bacterial cell membrane on the inner they are present inside the cell wall so these antibiotics must have to cross uh, the barriers and to attach to this penicillin binding protein which we will discuss later in detail that what are these penicillin binding protein our antibiotic must has to cross this cell wall to reach here and to attach uh, here with this penicillin binding protein to inhibit the bacterial cell wall synthesis in this case uh, the peptidoglycan molecule this whole uh, molecule or this whole structure uh, is considered as a single molecule and this whole structure is also considered as a single molecule this uh, penicillin molecule has to cross this peptidoglycan layer to enter and to act upon the penicillin binding protein here it can easily move easily cross this peptidoglycan layer while here if we consider this is our penicillin molecule having r side chain it will not be able it will not be able to cross this porine channel and to reach here to act upon its site of action this is the penicillin binding protein so if uh, the porine channel are not tightly closed and if our penicillin molecule is smaller in size it will be able to cross this uh, porine channel to enter in inside and to cross this bacterial cell wall and to attach here at the receptor which is a penicillin binding protein to inhibit the bacterial cell wall synthesis now we will have a more
zoom view of a bacterial cell and will this uh, and will find how the bacterial cell wall is synthesized and where our antibiotic will have to act let us this is a bacterial cell this is a double membrane phospholipid bilayer bacterial cell membrane this is a bacterial cell this is the bacterial cell membrane now you will draw here the bacterial uh, cell wall in a lesser zoom view this one like this whether it is gram positive or gram negative these are the glycan here the peptide bond bonds now we will draw this more in a more zoom view and in a more elaborated way, way so that you may understand what are these glycan layers these are actually unit of carbohydrate or sugars which are attached to each other this is a n acetyl muramic acid unit this is n acetyl glucosamine unit here they have a peptide short peptide bond this is one layer this is another layer short peptide bond now here this bond through which these two sugar units are attached is process is called glycosylation they are also attached by the glycosylation reaction they are also attached by the glycosylation glycosylation reaction while this bond is called transpeptidation reaction this is called glycosylation and this is called transpeptidation reaction now why this bacterial uh, cell wall is needed for bacteria when bacteria are uh, newborn the cell their cell contents are not too much concentrated uh, and the osmotic pressure inside the bacterial cell is not too much uh, but as soon as they become mature they start concentrating molecule inside their inside their bacterial uh, cell membrane or cell wall so when osmotic pressure is increased here fluid will come from outside to inner side from outside to inside the bacterial cell membrane bacterial cell bacterial cell will swell up and this bacterial uh, cell membrane is not uh, much efficient to prevent this osmotic pressure so the bacterial cell will burst so nature has gifted bacteria a bacterial cell wall 
which is tough enough to prevent or to withstand this osmotic pressure and to prevent the bursting of bacterial cell. So if this bacterial cell wall will be damaged, fluid will come inside the bacterial cell, bacterial cell will swell, swell up and will burst as a result bacteria will die. This is why bacterial cell wall is too much needed for the bacterial cell. Now we start with the basic procedure how the bacterial cell wall is synthesized. It is synthesized inside the bacterial cell from monosaccharides. Let us consider this is the neg unit and from monosaccharide let us, let us consider this is the name unit if we have to polymerize these name and neg unit we must have to activate them for activation process UDP is attached with this huh? name unit and also with this neg unit then in the next step no this nose will be formed or this pre There are a lot of uh, peptidation reaction are steps involved over here. At last the D-alanine, D-alanine units will be added and this uh, short peptide chain will be made of amino acids. And then in the next step what will happen? There is a molecule which is a uh, highly lipid soluble I will make it here with a different color this molecule is highly lipid soluble when these units are completed inside the bacterial cell they must be transported outside so they can be attached there for this purpose this uh, molecule which is highly lipid soluble works This is the name unit with the nose and this is the neg unit. UDP will be released here and here a UDP will also be released. Now this molecule will flip to the other side. Let us consider it here. and it will add uh, its name and neg unit uh, here what is this this is the enzyme which is responsible for the trans glycosylation or glycosylation reaction and this is what step this is the this enzyme I will make it larger here rather with a different color so that you may understand it uh, clearly this is the enzyme which is responsible for the transglycosylation reaction and here is another exam uh, here is another enzyme which is 
responsible for what? This enzyme is responsible for uh, this transcriptation reaction. So how the antibiotics uh, they inhibit uh, the bacterial cell wall synthesis. The first step uh, or the first antibiotic which inhibit the bacterial cell wall synthesis, first antibiotic act at this stage. Let us consider we send a series, a series or traffic of uh, antibiotics. This is the antibiotic drug. It come on cycle and inhibit uh, this formation of nose. This is called cyclo serine. So when no nose will be formed, or when this no when this will not be formed, this is the short peptide chain. Both these layer will not be able to. transpeptide to make transpeptidation reaction and to be attached with each other so a loose cell wall or disconnected cell wall will be formed and the bacterial cell wall will be lost and bacteria will die then another drug let us consider this drug here this drug come and bus This is come in bus. This bus is a uh, fitted over here. So this bactero ah uh, what is this molecule? This molecule is called bactrophenol bactoprenol phosphate. Bactoprenol. The highly soluble molecule and its activity is to flick, uh, to flip back into adhere the N name and neg unit on, to transport the name and neg unit on, across the bacterial cell membrane because the these are highly charged on, and they cannot move as such they cannot cross the bacterial cell membrane as such uh, so if this molecule is uh, hanged over here and this cannot flip back uh, normally physiologically when this name and neck unit is added it flick, flip backs again takes another name and neck unit and again flips uh, to the outside and adds another unit uh, but uh, if this is hanged over there uh, it will not be able to come back so it will not be able to carry another name and neg unit so it will not be able to add another name and neg unit and bacterial cell wall will synthesis will be stopped then another class of drugs which come in the vein this is a another class of drugs which come in the vein the block this enzyme which is responsible for
you trans uh, which is responsible for the glycosylation reaction not the trans glycosylation the glycosylation reaction the glyco silation reaction so when this enzyme will be inhibited then, we, then there will be no glycosylation reaction among these sugar backbone molecule so these sugar molecules will not be able to attach with each other and no bacterial cell wall will be synthesized and this enzyme which is called the penicillin binding protein when this enzyme inhibited is inhibited by our penicillin molecule then there will be no trans uh, peptidation reaction and bacterial cell wall since will be inhibited now it is also thought that there is another uh, molecule present here there is another uh, molecule or enzyme present over there this enzyme is called atolysine what is the function of this enzyme this enzyme eat up this bacterial cell wall layer why this eat up this bacterial cell wall layer because as bacteria grow in size it has to remove this layer so this layer will become the first layer of bacterial cell bacterial cell will become enlarged in size so this uh, atolysine enzymes which is present over there it eats up this first layer so bacteria increases in size and is fits into this layer but normally the action of this bacteria uh, atolysine is under a control of this atolysine inhibitor it is normally a well controlled process huh? but what our penicillin does our penicillin come here inhibit this atolysine enzyme inhibitor so this atolysine enzyme will become free and will eat this and this layer and much too much eating or too much uh, destroying of this layer by this atolysine en enzyme will damage bacterial cell wall and as a result bacterial cell wall will be ruptured bacterial cell membrane will be ruptured and bacteria will cell will die what are the different uh, mechanism of bacterial cell wall synthesis inhibitor the first step is that this name and neg unit which are formed here inside uh, the short peptide chain d alanine d alanine amino acid residue addition step is inhibited by the cycloserine second step is this bacteroprenol is inhibited by bacitracine so in the first step there will be no nose or no short peptide chains so when these uh, units will be exported outside huh, they will not having this short peptide bond short peptide chain so there will be no trans peptidation reaction so there will be no peptide synthesis are uh, 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 this uh, peptidoglycan synthesis the second uh, bacitracine it, what does it it inhibit this bacteroprenol phosphate molecule so it will not export these name and neg unit so name and neg unit will not be added to the uh, synthesizing 
bacterial cell wall. So bacterial cell wall synthesis will be inhibited. Third step is this that of vancomycin. That of vancomycin, which inhibit this tra uh, this uh, glycosylation reaction. This glycosylation reaction is uh, inhibited by the vancomycin. So there will be no addition of newer units of a name and neck and there will be no bacterial cell wall synthesis. Fourth step is that uh, by beta-lactam antibiotic like penicillin, cephalosporin, carbapenem, amipenem, they inhibit what? They inhibit the penicillin binding protein which is responsible for the transcriptization and they also inhibit uh, what? Uh, they also inhibit this uh, atrolysine inhibitor so the atrolysine is set free and it will eat of this cell, bacterial cell wall or destroy this existing bacterial cell wall and here it uh, inhibit further synthesis of bacterial cell wall so bacterial cell wall synthesis inhibitor and bacteria will die thanks for watching